Now, uh, power purchase parity is basically um, uh, tells us that, uh, well, the purchasing power, the, the, in, the price level actually uh, determine the exchange rate. So it means that, well, if I can buy map, big map in the United States, then I need to actually have the same value being map in London. So exchange rate between two currencies should be equal to the ratio of the country's price levels. For example, if an ounce of gold costs $300 in the United States and 150 pounds in the United Kingdom, then the price of one pound in terms of dollars should be the price dollar 300 and price pound 150 should be two dollar per pound. Makes sense, right? Suppose the spot exchange is one to one point two five per pound, then uh, and the uh, inflation rate in the U.S. is expected to three percent next year, five percent in eurozone. Then exchange, expected exchange rate should change to now one plus. So one euro should be. 1.25 spot times one plus inflation rate. So 3% US divided by 5%. That's what it says. So it means that, well, if not, then you have arbitrary between to you. You can buy, so if it is cheaper in the United States, let's say $200, then you spend two hundred dollars to buy gold, ounce of gold, and you go to London and sell it for hundred fifty pounds, and just exchange it to two dollars. Then that is arbitrary opportunity, right? So that's why they believe that the well, the the price level um, ratio should be the exchange rate. So the euro will trade at 1.9% discount in fourth market because now the fourth rate divided by spot rate should be the fourth rate will be 1.25 for euro plus 1.i interest rate dollar. I'm sorry, the inflation rate pi dollar and one plus pi pounds divided by the spot rate, then it eventually actually will be one plus inflation rate, expect inflation rate of the domestic US divided by one plus foreign inflation rate, right? So it will be 1.09% and Relative power purchasing parity says that the rate of changes in exchange rate is equal to differences in the rates of inflation. It's not exactly actually because it is a 5% minus 3% is 2%, right? And this is close, but so it means that it's actually not really equals, it's actually close to equal. That's more right way to say. But it's exactly equals to one plus domestic inflation divided by one plus foreign inflation rate. So note that this should be the same, right? Because using the PPP, now one plus foreign inflation. So the forward rate divided by spot rate should be one plus Foreign inflation, uh, domestic inflation, I'm sorry, divided by one plus foreign inflation and actually using the interest rate parity and it should be equal to one plus interest rate domestic divided by one plus foreign interest rate. Which means that now if you lead, link these two then one plus inflation differences divided by one plus inflate, I mean one plus I'm sorry, dollar inflation. So US inflation divided by one plus foreign inflation should be one plus US interest divided by one plus foreign interest. So actually, 
The difference between these two inflation rate is close to interest rate differences, right? If you believe these two parities. So you can actually find this. So expected inflation exchange rate differences should be close to inflation differences. Inflation differences. And then because of that, again, this inflation differences is also close to interest rate differences. And that's actual expected inflation, which means that if your PPT linked to the IRP, then it means that the expected inflation differences is the measure to uh, determine the interest rate differences. So let's find the evidence. The PPP probably doesn't hold precisely in the real world, right? Because if you have example here, haircut costs 10 times as much as in the developed world as in the developing world. So the value of labors are different actually. Film on the other end is hardly standardized commodity that is actively traded across the border. Shipping costs, tariff, quota, any, any type of trading costs actually can lead the deviation from the purchase power parity. But this PPP determined exchange rate still provide very valuable benchmark. So this is a guide of the world price, the hamburger, the aspirin, men's haircut, movie ticket. Well, hamburger, like a Mac, Mac, Big Mac is good measure actually about the price level usually. Haircut is probably not because the labor costs are so different. Because And you can, if you look at the standard deviation here, the standard deviation is quite high, right? So it's probably not a good measure. But uh, burger may be a good measure because hamburger, like the standard deviation, is only 0 0.84, right? So I think that this is kind of a good measure of that. And then if you look at that, uh, like the there is a price differences and these actually can determine the interest rate determine uh, differences and also the exchange rate too. So this is approximate equilibrium. So it's not exactly because you, you probably know that it's not going to be exactly uh, hold, but they basically believe that the well expected exchange rate appreciation it should be close to the interest rate changes, right? And also expected to inflation changes, inflation changes.